this relationship I've had with whistleblowers began maybe two years ago and they were the ones that alerted to us the fact that the steam generators that are now a problem were being installed improperly and tests were being skipped and all matters of budget and uh, you know trying to get back on schedule so now it turns out the whistleblowers were right and different sets of whistleblowers have come to us since then and the most recent one was last night, which was probably the most concerning of all because he had to do with the fact that um, he confirmed that Edison announced in a company meeting that their suspicion that there had been some tampering of backup safety equipment has actually been tampering. It's not faulty machines or something that happened by accident. They know it was intentional. And now they're calling in the FBI. But none of this stuff comes out into the public except for you know, people like me getting it from people inside working on it. So it just raises the level of anxiety and fear so much more knowing that not only are they the most, um, they have the most safety violations, they have the most cases of uh, retaliation against people who report safety concerns, and like they, what? What kind of scare tactics do they do? Oh, the scare tactics? That's brutal. It's if a person comes to a, if they have something serious that they're just really persistent about, the the most like sinister strategy I've heard is the they'll trump up a bunch of false accusations against this person, and then they'll say you'll have to defend yourself against our team of lawyers and our team of lawyers have all this concocted evidence against them. And so this poor guy's got to find a lawyer to protect him, pay for it, and it becomes an impossible situation and they end up well saying, well, you know, we'll settle, you sign this uh, non-disclosure agreement and you go away and we'll take care of the problem, don't worry about it. You know. And nothing ever happens about the problem. But that's typical of what's going on and it's frightening to know that's what goes on but it's so different when you start talking about sabotage because they were lucky they discovered this it was just because there was some smeared grease on top of a piece of equipment that shouldn't have been there someone looked a little closer and saw that the fluid didn't look right so they discovered it okay great they discovered it and maybe they'll catch the guy but what else did he do? Or who else would be that desperate to do something like that? And they're compromising safety e equipment. It's just, you know, so that's what I got on the phone with a reporter from Huffington Post. He spoke to the person that was on the other, you know, part of the conference call. And he was so convinced that he, he wrote the article and it came out the very next day. And it was powerful, you know. But the public still kind of new to this thing and I was anxious to make sure more people know about it. Can you just encapsulate what happened with the sabotage? What happened is a couple of weeks ago I was called by someone that said there's been a problem, uh, safety equipment's been compromised and there's possibilities of sabotage or you know just accident or uh, equipment failure of some kind. And so that kind of raised the flag, thinking someone said, you know, sabotage, you know. And what happened was um, a, someone had put hydraulic fluid into a reservoir that was supposed to have diesel fluid. And because it was the wrong chemistry, it would have uh, prevented the diesel generator from working properly. It basically would have just started up and run and just kept going until it um, froze from running too fast and it would they'd lose control of the governor on this huge diesel generator that's like looks like a train basically so that's what we use to provide electricity if there's no electricity coming to the power plant for you know a big wildfire could take it out or uh, earthquake or something where we have to have electricity at the power plant to keep the reactor fuel cool so, you know, that's, that's one step away from a meltdown. And it's just frightening now that they've confirmed that it is sabotage 
and they don't know who did it just raises the bar to the point where it's absurd to even think about starting uh, this Unit 2. On top of everything else, you know, there's plenty of reasons not to start Unit 2. And the biggest one probably is, we all know it's a huge risk, and we got through almost a year without nuclear power. So why are we going through all this? You know, let's invest our time and energy and money into something that's really promising for a green future. That's, that's what seems so obvious, but you know, you have industries that are committed and they have so much money coming from this machine that just runs every day when it's great. It's like a million bucks a day, but uh, you know, we got to stop it. And that's why we're here. Bye.